All right, so for this first one, we have that as part of his mathematics exploration about classical books. Jason investigated the time taken by students in his school to read the book, The Old Man and the Sea. And they tell us, he collected his data by stopping and asking students in the school corridor until he reached his target of 10 students from each of the literal, literature classes in his school. What is now in yellow is this guy's sampling method, okay? So we need to state which of the two sampling methods systematic recorder Jason has used. All right, so this is one of the things you just kind of have to know. Um, systematic, the way it works is like, let's say you have a population of 100,000 in a city and you will choose that every 10th person or no, let's say every 50th person you interview them, okay? You interview, or that is like your your sample, see? So that means you interview the person number 50, the person number 100, the person number 150, and so on and so forth. See, so that would be systematic. The key thing about systematic here is that it's every X amount of people, see? On the other hand, quota would be like, okay, of these 100,000, you sample or you interview the first 50. So then you would be doing person number one, person number two, person number three, until you reach 50, see? That is the difference between systematic or quota. And so here, the key word or a big hint is that they say until, see? So until he reaches his target of 10 students per class, right, from each of the literature classes in his school, um, that is like his sampling method, see? And so since it's about reaching a certain amount, until is the big hint for quota, and it also strays from systematic, because systematic would say something like every X amount of people. So in this case, it's not every X amount of people. It is until he reaches his target of 10 students. So that is for part A. Part A, the answer is quite simply quota. That is explanation. Then for part B, they tell us that Jason constructed the following box and whisker diagram to show the number of hours students in the sample took to read this book and to calculate the mean the median time to read the book. All right. The big thing here is understanding how to read a box and whisker diagram. And so in any example, quite literally any, any example, um, this first line here is going to be your minimum, which hint makes the other line over here your maximum. Okay. So it's your minimum maximum values. What you have in between is Q1, Q2, and Q3. The other cool thing here that, well, doesn't show up in this problem, but it is good to know about box and whisker diagrams, is that the value like of having your data set up like this is that you know that between minimum and Q1, for example, this is the first 25% of your data. Between Q2, sorry, between Q1 and Q2, this is your second 25% of your data, see? And so that being said, and actually helping us for part B, this whole part here, if you add these two numbers, of course, the 25 and 25, whoops, you reach 50%. And so 50% is right at the middle. Right at the middle is going to be your median. Median is Q2, okay? Q2 equals median. And where is my Q2? Well, we look at our graph, it's on 10, okay? So that is for part B, all right? But yeah, so that was like a mini one-on-one on how to read box and whisker diagrams. And for the median, we just put Q2. Q2 is the thing in the middle, see? All right, for part C, they ask us to calculate the interquartile range. The formula for this is actually in your formula booklet. So if you don't recall it, please check there, get familiar with it. It's very important to get familiar with the formula booklet. It's one of the few things you will have when you enter uh, the IP exam. The interquartile range, also called IQR, is going to be Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 in this case is right here, 15. Q1 is right here, which would be six, seven. This right here would be seven, see? So 15 minus seven, it's gonna be eight. Your interquartile range is eight. Then they tell us that Mackenzie over here, a member of the sample took 25 hours to read the novel. And Jason believes that Mackenzie's time is not an outlier, and we need to see whether Jason is correct or not in respects to this, see? And so here, a lot of people would say, all right, uh, where the hell is 25? 25 was over here. 25 is very much to the right side. 
it's even the maximum. And some people would say, oh, it's so far away from the, my data, it's probably an outlier. And they just, that's like their justification, see? The thing is, we can't solve this visually, unfortunately, see? But in this case, there is actually a formula we have to use, a formula that you do have to memorize. It is not in your formula booklet, but it goes like this. For outliers, you can have outliers on the upper end, or you can have outliers on the lower end, see? Um, and to figure out what that upper fence or lower fence is, it goes like this. For the upper fence, and so for your upper fence, since we are looking at the right side of the diagram, we will be taking Q3, see? And so the formula goes like this. You take Q3 for the upper fence, you add to it your IQR, and you multiply only the IQR by 1.5. And so this will be like your frame of reference. Anything beyond that will be considered an outlier. So let's go ahead and plug in. Q3 we said was 15. IQR we said was 8. And the 1.5 does its thing, just like that. And this is going to give you 27. So that means that my upper fence that I will now mark in red is going to be literally there. See? So anything to the right of this 27 will be considered an outlier, right? And so the number we're looking at is 25, ¿cierto? So Mackenzie, our homie, took 25 hours to read the, the novel. But since 25 is less than 27, in other words, it's less than your upper fence, that means it is not an outlier. And so what was Jason saying? Jason was saying that, Jason believes, ¿cierto? That Mackenzie's time is not an outlier. That means Jason is correct. Effectively, it is not an outlier. In this case, they do not ask for the lower fence, but just so that you know, the intuition is very similar. ¿cierto? So instead of Q3, because in this case we're looking at the right side, now we're looking at the left side. So now we take Q1, and instead of adding, we will be subtracting. So Q1 minus IQR times 1.5. So this is just showing how to get the lower fence, helping you figure out what is an outlier. And over here, we have the upper fence for the outlier on the other end. ¿Cierto? Yep, that's pretty much it. Then they tell us that for each student interviewed, Jason recorded the time taken to read The Old Man and the Sea, measured in hours, and paired this with the percentage score in their final exam. These data were presented on the scattered diagram. And so on the y-axis, as we can see here, we have percentage on the exam. For the x-axis, which is in hours, we have time. See? That means, ju just so that we are all on the same page, that someone that took 10 hours to read um, The Old Man and the Sea got about an 80% on the exam. Someone that took, say, whatever this amount is, took around, I mean, got around 70% on the exam. See? So that is how you read this uh, diagram. Part E is asking us to describe the correlation. And so this correlation, let's remember the correlation is kind of like in which direction the data is going. And so there's two things we can like really talk about with correlation. We can say whether it's uh, positive or negative or neither, ¿cierto? And you can also say whether it's strong or weak. And again, neither. And so in this case, what we can say is that it is kind of like going down, right? How do I know it's going down? Because if I draw a line of best fit, if I try to, you know, try to run into as many of these points as possible, it's going to be something like this. So we can say that the correlation is negative, but it's a little bit harder to say whether it's strong, weak, or neither. See, so the big point here, because it is what worth one point or party, e, is to say that it is a negative correlation. You can argue that it's strong or weak. In this case, for the answer key, it doesn't matter. It's very important that you just put negative, see? But for correlations, again, there are two things you say, whether it's positive or negative, or neither, and how strong it is. Then they tell us that Jason correctly calculates the equation of the regression line, y on x, for these students to be this, see? So this that I'm putting, well, in yellow, is the same line that I drew over here. Of course not, like, to scale, but that's the idea, ¿cierto? So this line that I put in yellow is, in theory, the equation of the regression line over there, right? So he tells us that he uses the 
equation to estimate the percentage score on the final exam for a student who read the book in 1.5 hours. So let's remember, the confusing part here is what the hell is Y, what the hell is X, right? Because they do give us 1.5 hours, but where do I plug that in? Do I plug it into Y, do I plug it into X? If you do not recall, go back, read, take a moment, look at your diagram. X measured in hours, Y percentage score. Booyah. So find the percentage score calculated by Jason. That means if we're finding percentage score, we are finding Y, so Y stays the same. And we will be plugging in for X, just like this. And so when X is 1.5 hours, Y will be just around 96.49 which is the same as leaving it as 96.5%. Also possible for part G, they tell us to state whether it is valid to use the regression line Y on X for Jason's estimate and to give a reason for your answer. So here, there's always a couple things you can say, um, but it's important to take this from the perspective of like, how much sense does it make? And so does it make sense that I am able to estimate someone that studied for 1.5 hours? Let's see. My data has that, all of, all of these data points, ¿cierto? The person that studied the most studied around 25 hours, right? The person that studied the least studied around, we can probably call that five hours, see? I'm kind of eyeballing it, but the idea is that the one that studied the least was five hours. The one that studied the most was 25. And so 1.5 is like, dude, it's like way over here. ¿cierto? So it's a little bit off. My closest data point is around 3.5 hours away. It's a lot. ¿cierto? And so here you can say not reliable because it is too far away. Literally. One of the answers or how you can put it according to the answer key is that you can say uh, outside the given range of data. Basically, here that I have in orange is at 1.5 hours. It's a little bit too outside of the data that I already have. ¿cierto? If it was closer, like maybe here, you could argue that you might be able to use it to estimate. But the moment it's outside of the range of data, you can already use it as an, as an argument. See? So it, that makes it not reliable for extrapolation. All right. Awesome. Then they tell us that Jason found a website that rated the top 50 classical books. He randomly chose eight of these classical books and recorded the number of pages. For example, book H is rated 44th, like this guy here, and has 281 pages. See? These data are shown in the table. So book A has 4,015 pages. 4,215 pages, and is considered the number one book on the store, see? Or of all time, fair said. So then they tell us that Jason intends to analyze the data using Spearman's rank correlation coefficient RS, and to be able to do that, we actually have to fill in this table here. And so this table here, you will notice that it also has number of pages, much like this guy here. It also has top 50 rating, much like this guy here. But the big, big difference is that now we are working with ranks. Ah, so you're ranking things. You're putting them in order. For example, the most clear, um, I'll just show it and it'll probably make more sense. For book A, you have 4,215 pages. Is this the one with the most amount of pages? What is the closest number to this? The closest number to this is that guy. ¿Cierto? And so the, the one with the most number of pages is book A. The one with the second most number of pages is D. So we're going to put a 2 over here. What about the third? Well, what's the closest number to 1,225? It would have to be 863. ¿Cierto? So over here we're going to put 3. And we keep going. What's the closest number next to that? It would be this guy over here. So that would be number four. And now you get the idea. ¿cierto? Whoops. Five, six, seven, eight. 
So that would be for number of pages. See, that's like how you rank it, basically. And for the top 50 rating, now that we get the intuition of the previous one, we will see here that, all right, this one is ranked first. So it's going to be the first one here. This one is ranked second, so it has to be second here. There is no third, there is no fourth, but there is a fifth. And the fifth is the closest one to two. That's the key idea. Fifth is closest one to two, so we put a three here. Which one is the closest one to five? The seven, so we put a four here. Closest one to seven of these four, 13. Ah, you keep doing that, it actually ends up like this. All right, so that is for part H. All right, then now, finally, they ask us to calculate the value of RS. And so RS makes reference to uh, experiments rank correlation coefficient, and you use that with line reg on your calculator. See, so I'm gonna show it now how that works. So in your calculator, probably looking something like this, you will go to stat, and since we are calculating something, we go to calc, go down to line reg. See? So what is line reg asking, asking for? It's asking for an X list, a Y list, and a frequency list is store reg EQ. For now, don't worry about it. See? But you need an L1 and an L2. So where the hell do I find that? Well, stat edit. Stat edit, these are my lists. As you see up top, we have L1, we have L2, right? And so for L1, it's just gonna be this first guy over here. So this whole guy is gonna be L1. And well, you guessed it, the other guy is going to be L2, see? So I already did that. I put them in order. It's very important that they, that they are aligned. One goes with one, three goes with two, five goes with three, etc. See, so once you do that, you go back over here, line reg, uh, L1, L2, blah, 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 go ahead and calculate. You end up with this, cierto? So you can see that my equation looks something like y equals 0 0.714, right? Plus 1.2, blah, 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 right? 2857. And so in this case, and depending on your calculator, it gives the R value right away. But your R value is going to be this guy here. See, it's going to be like the slope, whatever you want to call it. That would be the value of RS. So that is part I, I, cierto? so boom, boom. And interpreting the result, well, basically, um, here you would simply say that the R value, or actually before I jump to the big conclusion, right? Let's first say that an R value of one, okay, is perfect correlation. It's literally perfect correlation, all right? Plus or negative one. For example, if you have something that goes like this, that would be perfectly positive. If you have something that goes like that, that would be perfectly negative. As you see, it is starting at corners, it is ending at corners, right? That is like the main idea that I'm trying to show. For perfect correlation would be on R equals to one. So on R of around 0 0.7, right? That is pretty close to one. So you could consider it as strong or moderate, see? And because it's 0 0.7, um, that means it's going upward. It's also positive, so it's not negative. So you would actually say that this is a positive slash strong correlation, right? And it's very important that you don't just leave it at positive slash strong. You say that it's positive slash strong between, and here goes the context of the problem, between number of pages and top 50 rating, see? And so there's two big points that give, I mean, two big things <laughs> that give points here. The first is describing the correlation well. So you say it's positive or negative and whether it's strong or not. And then you give the context of the problem. You say that this correlation is positive or strong between blah, blah, blah. So between my X and Y, which we said was number of pages and top 50 rating. That is for number one.